all you need to be able to measure is how much we have deviated from the normal run operation. I get me. Then we come up with an equation that involves the deviation. Are we there? Once we come up with that equation, we will know how much correction will have to be done to bring that, that process back on track. So virtually, we are looking at measuring error, and then we are deciding on how much correction should be done per what percentage of one of error. That is the first thing. That will be just a just that we did not label it that way. So we are going further to see. So what you what you can do is that if the behavior is not right for you, let's say we try to what we tried was to have for an error of 10, that is if we move to the right by 10, if we move from our 50 point by 10 to 60, we chose a steering of 50 and that gave us a slope of what 1.5 and an intercept of what negative 75. Now I follow If we had said okay this steering is too slow. We want to have better steer or more grip, I follow it. We will say, okay, let us try to assign a correction of 20 for each 10, uh, an, an error of 10. Then we will see what gradient we have and what intercept we have. Let's try to correct by 35 for an error of 10. After going through all of this trial, we will come up with the best uh, solution or the best control. Are we getting it? So we will have to decide which one will be the best control as far as we are concerned. We are only trying this one. But you could go ahead and try for the other control points. Now, let's look at something called proportional power. Proportional power is similar to proportional theory. Now, the difference is this, that with what we just did, the control was to the steering. But these motors are turned on and turned on at what different speeds. I follow you. You can turn them on at different speeds. The motors can go from 0 to 100. So you can decide to drive one motor at 100 and the other at 0. One at 50, the other at 70. One at 40, the other at 50. The amount of power you supply to these motors tell how fast they will rotate. And by deciding on how fast they rotate, you can also control the movement of what? The autonomous car. Are we there? If one wheel moves faster than the other, what is going to happen? The robot is going to turn towards the slower wheel. I follow it. So we want to say that the speed of the motors should be dependent on the error that has been measured by the light sensor. Are we there? That is proportional power. So the amount of power we supply to the motors is dependent on the error value that has been recorded by what? By the light sensor. So how do we do that? We will say that with a fixed value of 50 as our desired light sensor value, we always want to measure the error. How do we calculate the error? The error is how much we have deviated from the desired value. So if I measure 70, it means my error is 1. I have an error of 20. If I measure, so let's calculate error to be equal to line sensor reading, line sensor reading minus the desired value, which in our case is what 50. I follow it. So at any point in time, we will have an error value. So if I measure, if the light sensor is more in the black and I have 40, then the error value is what? What is the error value? Minus 10. I follow it. Now we're going to convert this error values into controls. Light sensor reading 40 minus desired value 50. That's minus 10. Uh, if I'm here, then error is positive. I follow it. So we are going to say that for proportional control, it is coming from what people call PIE, proportional integral derivatives. So either proportionality, which means our error or our correction is being done as a proportion of the error. I get it. Or derivative control, which means our <coughs> correction is being done based on a derived, and when we say derived, you, are not, you know what that derived is? Differentiation. Dy dx. <coughs> Change in y with respect to what? Change in x. That's the rate at which something is happening. So the error 
That is the rate of change of error. It's what we want to use to do our control. And when we get to know the rate of change of error, what, are, what power does that give to us? If I know the rate at which something happens, it gives me the chance to be able to do our two printers. The next one, do it before it happens. I will. So we can say that we will not wait for the error to happen. We can predict the coming error and we will put the corrective measure before it happens. I will. That is the derivative control. The integral is integration. Accumulating errors and then doing your correction over the period of time. I follow. So we'll be doing this one shortly. It's not strange. But we want to start with the proportional power. So the proportional power is saying, first of all, we want to measure the proportion of our error. And use that proportion to, uh, to control the power going to our motors. How do we measure the error? I'll say that the line sensor reading minus what? Our desired value, I follow it. That is, uh, uh, so let's say, desired value could be 50 for, for our single light sensor. That will go to the mass block, we subtract, I follow it. And the result that comes out of this is what we call error. Are we there? Error equals light sensor reading minus what? 50. That is thought as error. So let's quickly program that one first. So to program, to get the error, we say the light sensor should record what it is seeing. The value that the light sensor reports, we will subtract. The value that the light sensor reports, we will subtract what? 50 from that value. Are we there? And this result is what we call what? Error. So I'll create a variable. This time, not a constant. I'll create a variable because the value of error will be changing as the robot is navigating. So we cannot store it in a, what? In a constant block. So I create a variable and I call that variable error. Uh, so I'll say there is a variable called error. The value in that variable is always equal to what? The light sensor reading minus what? 50. I follow it. Now, this error, we want to make correction based on the error that has happened. So what that means is that if I record 51, my error will be what? 1. It means I've just moved one point from my desired location, and quickly the correction should be made. I should not wait to make an error of 50 before the correction is made. Are we there? So I get my error value, but I'll multiply my error value by what we call a gain, or proportional gain. It's just a thing. <coughs> Proportional gain. And I'll explain that. With proportional gain, why we multiply this by proportional gain is this. Remember, your error value with one light sensor, you have 50 as the main point. Maximum value from light sensor is what? 100. Are we there? So the maximum possible error is what? 50. Which means your steering or your power can vary by what, 50. Or the correction you can do will be what, up to 50. So if I were moving my two wheels automatically, just like what we did, you are moving the wheels at a constant speed of, let's say, 50. If I'm moving my wheels at a constant speed of 50, the idea is this, that this arrow, I pick motor A, um, which is already moving at 50, and I will say, add the error to motor A's speed. And then I make <coughs> motor D, which is also moving at 50. And I say subtract the error from motor D's speed. What will be the end result? If motor A was driving at 50 and the error is 1, the error um, and the license sign records 51, the error will be what? 1. So motor A will begin to move at what? 50 plus 1. 1, 51. 
and motor B will begin to move at what? 50 minus 1. 41. 49. I see. So for an error of 1, quickly motor A speeds up by 1 and motor B what? Slows down by 1. By 1. I will get that to you at the quick correction. If the error was, if the light sensor recorded 48, what would be the error? Minus 2. So what is going to happen here? 50 plus. 50 plus minus 2. What, what is going to happen here? 48. I follow. And what is going to happen here? 50 minus minus 2. 52. So you can see if the error is negative, the control is down to one side, that's the left side. And if the error is positive, the control is down to what? To the right side. I follow it. So either motor A is slowing down for motor D to increase speed, or motor D is slowing down for motor A to what? To increase speed. Depend on whether the error was what? Negative or what? Positive. And this negative or positive is coming from where? Whether it was on the black or on the what? On the white. So still you have the control mechanism based on how much error has occurred on the max. I accept the, the picture. Now, to the point where the maximum error can be 50. If we are moving at a constant speed of 50, and the maximum error occurs, what is going to be the speed of motor A? If the maximum error, or let's say the light sensor recorded 100, which is possible with our calibrated light sensor, 100 minus 50 will give an error of what? 50. Which will mean that motor A will receive, it's already moving at 50. 50 plus what? Plus 50 is going to move at what? 100. And then it's going to move at what? Zero. So imagine one wheel turning at 50 and the other wheel turning at what? Zero. What is going to happen? It's going to turn all around. And that is what you don't want to have. I follow it. So now that you don't want to have that, what can you do? What you can do is to say that you don't want to use the entire error to do your correction. So you want to find a ratio of your error. You want to find a ratio of your error. By saying that the error value should be multiplied by a fraction. If I multiply the error value by let's say 0.5, what it means is that only half of my error is being used for what? For control. Are we there? Only half of my error is being used for control. When half of the error being used for control, it means when there is an error of one, what is going to happen here? It's going to move by 50.1.5. And it's going to move by what? 49.5. So you can see that this time, it is not the answer. So for the maximum error 